Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Random. Egberto is your host. Thank you so kind for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. How are my peeps doing? I trust that you had a great weekend. In the house today, we have Lee Grant, who says, hey, y'all. We have Eric Case, who's in the house. Peggy Lopez says, hi, all. Lurking about listening, gathering my coffee so I can really enjoy the show. And here is my coffee. Big one, because I'm tired as hell. Melody Keelan is in the house from Barcelona, Spain. And of course, we're here as, as well with E2247. Bruce Pollard says, let's ride. Yes, sir, we're going to ride. And AVQ is in the house. Uh, Michael Rudnan is here with a message from Routers. And the one and only, our beautiful Yvette, Avery Herod, is in the house. Uh, did I miss anybody? If I missed anybody, forgive me, but please throw yourself in the ring as more people show up on YouTube and more people show up on uh, on Facebook and more people show up on Twitch and more people show up on LinkedIn and more people show up on Twitter. We have a great show for you today, folks. I'm as I'm trying to wire these things and make sure that all the as as my brother from KPFT would say, make sure all the strings and tin cans are set up, which I'm doing as we speak. Uh, making sure it's all running fine. Let's see if that'll go. Oh, no, 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 no. We forgot to put a tag in there for Steve Schmidt, which I'm doing right now. But we got a show for you today. I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to love it. And we are about to get this baby started right now. Anyhow, folks, how was your weekend? I trust your weekend was fine. Mine was as fine as one can ask it to be. Uh, so yeah, we had a good one. We had a good weekend. Anyway, 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 today, you know, my thoughts on our good old attorney general from Texas, it, look, we are, we are in very, very precocious, treacherous times right now that a known corrupt attorney general, the guy who is the highest legal entity for your state is corrupt and he gets off we're in trouble we're in trouble where does uh, we're in trouble that's all i'm going to say for now we're in trouble and one hopes that in the long run we can take care of that anyhow let me go to read in some of the stuff that you guys put out there let's see e2247 says or rather 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 uh michael rudnan says the following there is there is a more than 95% chance that the El Nino weather pattern will continue through the Northern Hemisphere winter from January through March 24, bringing more extreme conditions. Science Norway, heading into a climate that humanity has never experienced before. Temperatures are still exceptionally high in the world. Oceans, after several months with record heat levels globally next year. We're about to get a sense of what the future of global warming will be like. Record-breaking extreme heat waves with hurricanes and flooding in some regions and droughts and famines in others. What With rising fuel and food prices all around and the likelihood of another round of climate refugees heading from uh, newly in, on inhabitable lands. I also predict that the term heatflation will be added to our collective vernacular as crop yields are devastated by extreme heat weather events. And you know what? Let me tell you what's the saddest part about this. The same people who created this heat problem, who created this climate change, who, uh, prev who are trying their utter best to screw over all the changes that are necessary to mitigate the temperature. Look, we've already crossed the cliff. At this point in time, we have to start creating tools to drag by tonnage, by millions of tonnage, all the crap that we've thrown into the atmosphere. You know, for all those that are neglecting climate change and all this stuff, I ask one question. We have cores for thousands of years. We have cores. What I mean by cores is we can drill into ice that are thousands and hundreds of thousands of years old, and we can see the, the we can see what the atmosphere was like in those different times. Okay, we can see that it's not hidden. We know it. I don't care what you want to deny. Earth in the days of the dinosaurs, when all the carbon was being accumulated and deposited into the ground, because remember. All the animals and plants and dinosaurs that have 
absorb carbon out of our atmosphere to make it a livable environment for human beings were deposited into the ground. For all the climate deniers are the ones who want to neglect what you see in climate. Here's the deal. Whatever you think, the fact that we have increased the percentage of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere tells you that something is different from the norm we had reached with the creation of humanity as we know it today. So irrespective of your belief of whether it's cyclical or, or all this other crap that some people want to rely on as an excuse to allow the fossil fuel companies to continue burning or to appease the right wing people that really are not science based, including the people that they've paid to give some plausibility to inaccurate information. Just the fact that they make up up the atmosphere is different should give you pause and should say we have to stop using the atmosphere as a cesspool. We've got to stop at some time using the atmosphere as a cesspool. We have enough volcanoes and, and the potential of the eruption of Yellowstone and all these other things to worry about than for us to be also the culprit of also taking all that carbon that has been deposited for all these millions of years and throwing it right back into the air. It makes no logical sense. So when you when you start getting information, brothers and sisters, about uh, ever, some people trying to make excuses, just tell them the percentage of CO2 in the atmosphere has changed dramatically by percentage. Okay? That's not what you want. We don't want to be breathing that percentage anyway. But anyhow, I'll digress. I'll digress and move on to our uh, E2247 says, as long as rabbits don't have historians, history will be written by the hunters. Exactamente. I love that. That's a good analogy. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, bear with me as I read down. Eric Hayes says, more government influence in our mobile, in our media is what we need. Less uh, of uh, telling them how to do their jobs is the same as having the social media platforms and the justice system to do censorship. I don't know what you're trying to say. It's, uh, let's say it's disgraceful and the voting public hopefully is not that ignorant. Let's see. I don't know. Megan Kelly. White House sends memo to media outlets urging them to ramp up scrutiny of Biden impeachment inquiry. Uh, well, let, let, let's be clear here. Uh, we should not have a problem telling the media outlets to stop lying or to stop, a lot, not stop lying, to stop others from using our public airwaves to dispel lie, to not dispel, to put lies out there. All right, that is a just that is something that must be done. We must tell the media you cannot use our airwaves to put out propaganda like uh, like uh, the interview yesterday with Donald Trump by the new host of this not this week but uh, Meet the Press. You can't allow our airwaves to be used as a cesspool. Uh, by the way, Eric, I saw that thing about the colonias that you wanted to put out there. I don't know what you were trying to, I don't know what impression you were trying to get or message you were trying to put out there. Sometimes you have to check your heart and see what it is that you're really trying to say. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, let's see. Eric Hayes says Paxson was serving the state by suing the administration to keep things equal. No, Paxson was being the a-hole that he is. And notice I only call politicians names. I do not call my brothers and sisters of irrespective of their ideological bent by any names. But the politicians, they are evil. In the case of Paxton, Paxson was doing nothing evil. Paxson sued the Obama administration. Okay. Sued the Obama administration and not I can't do that video today uh, uh, Bridge MCP because I have to verify that I, I'm not going to get a copyright hit on that video given that it's out from the BBC. So I have to be careful with that particular video. I don't know who owns it. I got to figure that out first. It, MSNBC loves when you put their stuff out there, but you can't do that with everybody. 
All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, para ver, para ver. Lee Grant says progressives might be more comfortable in states like California than they are in Texas. There's nothing wrong with regional differences. No, there's not. But uh, also, however, we are responsible for where we live. And we are responsible for our brother's keepers. Or we are our brother's keepers. Additionally, um, I can't personally feel good about allowing my brothers and sisters to die. So what I want to do in Texas is ensure that all our brothers and sisters will have health care, that all our brothers and sisters will not die the life of poverty. Okay, so no, I do care. And it's not about progressives and liberal. I'm staying right here in Texas. This is my state. I'll try to help my state move on in making the lives of most better. Again, in making the lives of most better. Bridge says, after a 10-day trial. Hi, Bridge MCP. How you doing, my beer? beautiful lady? Uh, after a 10-day trial, Texas senators on Saturday voted to acquit Texas Attorney General Ken Paxson on allegations of bribery and corruption, clearing him to return to his duties as a state top lawyer. But Paxson's legal trouble are not over. He's a thug. Uh, we have a thug for, I mean, just like we had a thug for president, why not a thug for attorney general? If the highest person in the land at one time was a thug, I guess having one here in the Texas is not going to kill us, right? We survived Trump. We'll survive that thug in Austin. AC Rodriguez says sometimes percentages can be too complex of a concept for right wingers. Just saying. Lee Grant says tell China and India to stance on hydrocarbons. See what they say. Stop. Uh, stop, Lee Grant. America is the richest country in the world. America built its riches on one, the Industrial Revolution, slavery, polluting the atmosphere with other people's material as well. And then we are going to ask the others that they must do what we are doing to save the, the air. No. We, most of the carbon in the air, and I, I gave you those numbers before. Most of the carbon in the air belongs to carbon burned by the United States of America. Most of the climate change effects are by the United States of America. It turns out that India and China are justified to say, why should we burn in uh, burn, you know, do more in, in reducing burning than the United States unless the United States do the right thing and invest in India and China for what you have for your percentage of pollution. Right now, the per capita pollution of China is way less than the United States of America. In other words, per person, which is what you have to judge. We only have 4% of the world's population. China has a fifth of the world population. Should they only burn um, the same as we do, which gives our per capita burning that much more ridiculous. We have to be what I talk about. Critical thinking is important. We have to think critically if we are to have other countries respect us. I don't want countries respecting us because we can blow them to smithereens. I want them to respect us because we are doing the right thing. So we can't ask China and we can't ask others to do the same. Egberto, China currently puts out more carbon than the United States and EW combined. That's not taking into account historical trends. If we don't, wait, 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 wait. Uh, Rudnan, I just saw that and I'm going to come around to that in a minute. The per capita burning of fuel, a burning of carbon from China is under EU or America. So therefore to ask them if we are going to drop our carbon usage by a per capita basis, we should ask every country to do the same, not ask China as a country to do more than we are. But we have to do it, which means we have to drop what we do by a whole bunch. All right, continuing. Uh, let's see. Breed says Ken Paxson is yet another corrupt politician who's making money off his office. Important part. From your art, from your article, this in in the state case, Paxson faces two courts of sacrifice uh, of securities fraud, a first degree felony that carries a punishment of up to 99 years in prison, stemming from his 2011 
efforts to solicit investors in synergy uh, in synergy without disclosing that the McKinney Tech Company was paying him to promote the stock. Paxton also faces one count of failing to register with the state securities. And exactly, exactly, exactly. All right. Uh, let's see what else. Eric Hayes says, Egberto, the Colonia Ridge is a poor person development that has no drainage and filth, but it's marketed to poor people with oversight over the government. Yeah, well, you know, why don't we do something about that? All right. I think, Michael, that they have said the feds are going after him. OK, let's continue here. Uh, I'm scrolling down, folks, before I get to the first video. Uh, let's see what else we got here to read. Bear with me, folks, as I scroll. Our right, Eric Case, per capita applies uh, is applies oranges and no one respect America. They just want our money. Oh, Lord. They just want our money. What does America take from the rest of the world? Please tell me. America goes into every third world country, take their raw material, and then return those raw materials as fi finished goods, which means that those countries would always be in deficit to America. Why don't we try to think critically before we make statements like that? Why don't we try to understand what's going on in the rest of the world before we just create some silly talking points? Please. All right. If climate change is a product of a chemical reaction with carbon dioxide as a reagent, the climate change will change with the absolute amount of carbon, not its source. Uh, again, I agree with that. But again, what does that have to do with the issue, my dear brother? All right. Egberto, if you're out of things to read, once uh, once more, except read the whole thing. China currently puts out carbon, uh, more carbon than the U.S. and EU combined. That's not taking into account historical trends. If we don't step up together, including China and India, we'll die together. I understand that. But what I'm saying is we can do a lot more as America. And if we want China to do more, and India to do more. It's not as simple as saying we all, okay, forget about who caused most of the problem. We have to do this together. No, because there are other externalities that will affect China and India in destabilizing these very huge populated areas. If uh, Because again, remember what I said, there's a certain level of critical thinking and intellect that you need to understand that there are certain pains that have to be taken. So therefore, America has to do a lot more. The, U, the EU has to do a lot more. Okay? It has to do a lot more. A lot more than we're asking of China and India. And if we want India to even cut more in carbon and, in, and, and China to even cut more in carbon, we have to have transitional investments in these countries to mitigate that. That is, you know, I mean, just asking China and India uh, to sacrifice more so than America has ever sacrificed will never, ever, ever be an answer. They will say, let's take our risk and die together. That's what they would say. And that the, the right thing to do is for America to invest. But anyway, let's go ahead and listen to what Steve Smith has to say about the today's Republican Party. It's an interesting and important piece. Historically, he will be remembered as a repugnant figure. Uh, the abdication of his duty, um, the responsibility and the obligations are epic. So he received that email, which is chilling from Mitt Romney. And what did he do? He did what he has done for seven years. He did nothing like a turtle. He tried to put his head in the sand. He is the living embodiment of John Kennedy's admonition from his inaugural about those who seek power by trying to ride the back of the tiger only to wind up inside. What Mitch McConnell's legacy is substantially is he is the man who broke the United States Senate, which was once considered the greatest deliberative body in the world. He is an appeaser par excellence. So you have a storm system of cynicism, of cowardice, of racial malice that all combines to form under Donald Trump and has now threatened the cornerstone 
of the whole society, which is who gets to decide who's in power in the country? Is it something that's bestowed by the American people or is it someone who's taken or is it something that's taken by the richest, the strongest and the most powerful? This is an existential question. There are no people in the Republican Party who, when the cameras were off for many years, praised Donald Trump. That's for TV. That's for the show. Now, Democrats, there's not a one of them who you have a private conversation with who is not extremely worried, bordering on panic about President Biden's ability to make it through this election and to win in the election. And as soon as the cameras go on, they sing a different tune. So the American people see this. There's a conversation that's held by the elites of the country that projects over the whole of the media that they're not in the room for. They're not part of, but they get it completely. How does that, how does that cynicism that results from that, who benefits from that? The people who benefit from that are the demagogues and the autocrats. It's the Trump movement that flourishes in the BS environment. So the Republican Party is lock, stock, and barrel controlled by the greatest threat to freedom in America since the Confederate States of America. And seven years on, the pro-democracy party in the country has been unable to put it down, unable to do it. So right now, So give them a break in 22 or 21 or 20. But in 2023, if this election were held tomorrow, it's a jump ball all over the country. And nobody should underestimate the capacity of Donald Trump to win a general election in 2024. And everybody should understand the plans are laid down in writing and are openly talked about about how to dismantle the federal government within five to six months. The Claremont Institute is at the center of it. There are extremist groups who are planning for it. And when you look at this in the totality, the removal of a Supreme Court justice by impeachment in Wisconsin is part of January 6th. The impeachment that is being orchestrated without any evidence whatsoever by Donald Trump is part of January 6th. Each action is part of a greater whole. And the greater whole is a sustained attack on the American way of life, elections process, and democracy by a malevolence that has always existed in the country, but has manifested itself wholly inside the Republican Party. And the only institution in this country that has the ability to defeat it, that can defeat it, that exists to oppose this is the Democratic Party. And any fair evaluation of how the party is doing as an institution confronting this, my judgment is not good because the extremism and the threat of it has grown with each successive year. And the next election stands a chance to be America's last election if the ball bounces the wrong way. Anybody who thinks that Donald Trump and this extremist movement will be an easy an easy campaign to win is completely deluded. And the idea that you occasionally read from anonymous White House sources that in fact they want Trump to be the Republican nominee because they assess him as the easiest candidate to beat is yeah. immoral in my estimation and a sign of judgment that is so epically bad, I don't have a word for it. And again, it is something that we better heed. 
Uh, I see Michael says Lee Grant different for um, that's the wrong one. I, I, he says my FB feed is full of progressives who don't want to vote uh, for Biden, largely because Biden and the Democrats haven't done nearly enough on the issues they care about. Global warming, wages, health care. The Democratic Party is focusing too much on social issues and preventing Republicans attempts at hateful reg- regressive attacks against the parts of the American public they don't like. Exactly. Exactly. And yes, uh, Bridge MCP, that's the reason I wanted to play this piece from El Señor um, uh, Schmidt, because Schmidt has credibility on, in the conservative rank, even though he has become a bona fide conservative uh, Democrat now. Uh, but he's absolutely right with the statement that he just made. Donald Trump and the Republican Party are a clear and present danger to democracy. And enough of us need to see that so that we can go out there and vote accordingly. All right, let's see. Um, we have here, we need Putus to expand ESA pre- protections for more fragile wildlife and their habitat. Uh, we also have, Eric says, per capita is apples, oranges, and no one respect. Oh, per capita is not apples and oranges. Per capita is, in effect, a very important figure. Per capita is important. Every human being is distinct and, and has value. And what it says is, if China has 1.3 billion people, each and if each person wants to have a particular quant, well, I'm not going to go there because that, that is something you should know by now. All right, uh, let's see. Lee Grant, if climate is the product of a chemical reaction where carbon dioxide is a reagent, then climate change will change with the absolute amount of carbon, not its source. I think what you're trying to say there is, well, it doesn't matter that the carbon came from the United States. I understand that. The fact of the matter, however, is the United, most of what's up there was put there by the United States, and the United States got very, very rich from putting all that carbon out there. And therefore, it has to mitigate all that carbon out there. Something else needs to be done by the United States as well. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Oh, my God, Egberto, you're talk, taking about uh, China, not America, on third world countries. We're using China and other countries as a climate proxy. And that is a G7. And I don't know what the hell you're talking about there, my brother. I honestly don't know what you're trying to say there because I'm sorry, my brother. It makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, proxy? Are you kidding me? All right. Tom C, 15, uh, watching on YouTube. Hey, guys. Come on, give us a thumbs up, thumbs up on YouTube. Please do that now. Please do that now. If you are on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. We need those thumbs up to help the algorithm. AC Rodriguez says, apples and oranges is a bit hard concept for rappers. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, let's see. Egberto, America is sacrificing via climate alarmist policy. Look how everything is more expensive on purpose, and we are poor on purpose via policy. Uh, that just shows that that statement alone shows why I say we have to start teaching critical thinking, because if you believe that you don't live in America or rather, if you believe that you know nothing about the rest of the world, you know, I, if you believe that statement, it it, it explains why people. Uh, let's move on. Um, Daniel Lido says Steve Schmidt's a proven partisan hack. He's so partisan, Steve Smith is, that he he left the Republican Party to the Democratic Party because he realized there was only one party supporting democracy. Michael Rodney has a response for Lee Grant that's important. He said, different forms of carbon have different amounts of how they hold on to heat from sunlight, as well as how long they stay in the atmosphere. Their rising concentrations determine the total greenhouse effect. For example, methane is 80 times stronger a greenhouse effect uh, than carbon dioxide, but methane only lasts in the atmosphere for about 20 years. There's also uh, thousands times more carbon dioxide than methane in the atmosphere. Both carbon dioxide and methane are increasing in concentration with every passing year due entirely to human industrial use for fossil fuels, primarily coal. And there's another thing that you have to uh, put in there as far as... um, you know, how long it stays in the atmosphere, because it concerns me that people talk about how long it stays in the atmosphere. It's not only that it stays in the atmosphere, it's that when it leaves the atmosphere, where does it go? And where does it go is into the oceans. And when it goes into the oceans, 
what it does is it creates carbonic acid. And when it turns, when the ocean gets more acidic, it destroys our coral reefs. And when our coral reefs are destroyed, it destroys the environment for certain types of fish. And when it destroys a certain environment, certain types of fish, other predatory fish that depends on that food chain dies off. So you see people all around. Whether, whether you think carbon dioxide in the air causes climate change or not, the one thing we know is that the increased concentration of carbon will change the life forms that we have on this earth, given that it's gonna, it, it, it is already turning the ocean into carbonic acid. And as it turns into carbonic acid or more acidic, what occurs to the flora and fauna in that body of water? You see, it's all something that we need to think about. And America as a leading country should believe in making sure its citizens can think critically so that they can be ambassadors to the rest of the world. But as it turns out right now, we have a Republican Party that's making its own very less intelligent. It's making its people so unintelligent that they cannot th critically think to save the world. So when we go back to what Rudnin has to say, you know, Rudnin, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you as far as, yeah, we are, we'll die together. But my expectation is, why are we doing this? We're doing this with the expectation that we can, in fact, educate. All right, let's continue here uh, reading a few things more. I might miss a few. Uh, Michael, per capita is just per person rather than counting totals while ignoring population. All right. Thank you for that. That's an important. I, I, I hope people know that. My seat says Steve Schmidt left the GOP because he found out he could fool the Democrats. Now, why would he want to fool the Democrats again? Please explain to me why would he want to do that? Shiva Las Vegas, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Bri says, Eric, our town is getting a solar field. I personally are looking into solar panels on my land. A town over has a huge field, but the Republicans up there think it's wrong. It make the land look bad. Oh, my God. I get that. Yes, 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 yes. Avi Martin interviews geophysics professor, Geophysical Institute of Alaska, Vladimir Romanovsky, uh, Romanovsky about mostly unknown crisis of permafrost thaw and ripple climate. Oh, my God. Don't even talk about the permafrost melting. As the permafrost melts, because there's a lot of sequestered methane within the permafrost in the northern regions and the in, in uh, what do we uh, I forgot what we call those kinds of lands out there that methane, which is a lot more powerful than CO2, is going to f make it that much worse. Shame. I mean, again, we talk about critical thinking, girl. That's what we're talking about. People have to understand this stuff, right? Peggy Lopez says, Steve Schmidt, uh, Steve, oh, it scrolled, boy, scrolling too fast. Uh, Steve Schmidt. Uh, uh, Steve Smith is a Reagan Republican, in my opinion. He has become out today when it may be too late uh, to save democracy. is crap, and I do not want to hear him uh, change his tune so he can go to heaven. <laughs> That's cute. That is cute. Uh, let's see. Maxi Sexes Bridge. Yeah, good luck with the solar form. I've known over small towns that did the same, and customers were screwed over. Oh, my God. Madre mía, esta gente, no sé qué. Tundra, that's the word, tundra. That's what I was looking for. I keep forgetting it. Uh, uh, the, the tundra is uh, that place up north today. It's built on top and top peat moss, peat moss, peat moss, peat moss. There's a whole lot of um, uh, methane that's in there. All right. Bruce says, it's even more complicated than that. The end product of the original balance is an environment favoring Homo sapiens. The balance is changing not to favor us. Too bad for us. All we can do is slow it down by decreasing the total energy use of for our species. I agree. We are the ones causing the problem. It, we are the one causing the problem. You know? All right. Let's go ahead and listen to uh, uh, poverty. Let's talk about poverty and it's something that we chose uh Mehdi hassan did it even better than some others who've take tackle on the subject so let's go ahead and listen to Mehdi hassan 
As we reported last week, the poverty rate, the child poverty rate has increased by over 100 percent. In other words, it more than doubled. And it is a distinct there is a distinct reason why this occurred. It had nothing to do with the change in the economy, etc. It had everything to do with a change in policy, a change in policy that was dictated by a Democrat named Joe Manchin, along with all the Republicans in Congress. So here we have Joe Manchin and all Republicans who said, no, we want to reinstitute poverty, child poverty in America. We will ensure that policies will continue to enrich the few, but we are going to take it away from the children. Check this out. MediaSend nails it perfectly. Poverty, American conservatives love to say, is a choice. And the thing is, they're not entirely off base, except it's not that the underprivileged among us, the so-called welfare clean queens, whom Republicans love to demonize with racist stereotypes, choose to be poor. It's that lawmakers in this country, through their policy priorities, choose every congressional term to doom millions of Americans to the misery of poverty. And that reality has never been more clear than now. According to new data, the Census Bureau released on Tuesday, the poverty rate rose to 12.4% in 2022 from 7.8% in 2021, the largest one-year jump on record. Poverty among children more than doubled to 12.4% from a record low of 5.2% the year before. And of course, of course, Fox hosts, conservative grifters, Republican apparatchiks, immediately seized on that headline. American fail, the return of record poverty, said Fox's Charles Payne. Poverty has soared under Biden, decried flailing GOP presidential candidate Larry Elder. Child poverty more than doubled in just one year. Hashtag Bidenomics, sniped former Trump press secretary and noted Dancing with the Stars contestant, Sean Spicer. I regret to report there were even some on the left who tried to use it as a cudgel with which to beat the Biden administration and Democrats more broadly. Bidenomics in a nutshell, chirped two-time Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein. However, what Stein, as well as the folks on the far right, deliberately failed to mention is that child poverty in particular went up after action by the Biden administration in the first place reduced it to a historic low. Recall that in 2021, Biden and Democrats in Congress, without a single Republican vote, passed the American Rescue Plan, which one, increased the benefits of the child tax credit, which provides a guaranteed income to families with children, and two, expanded the program's eligibility to millions more underprivileged families. It's impossible to overstate how successful that policy was. It brought child poverty to its lowest rate ever recorded, ever recorded. And then last year, Joe Biden let the expanded child tax credit expire. Except wait, no, he didn't. He tried to get it renewed. It was Senate Republicans joined by that master practitioner of Democratic cosplay, Joe Manchin, who killed it. Manchin's reasoning? Poor families were wasting cash from the program on drugs. But wait, U.S. Census Bureau data found that people who received child tax credit payments overwhelmingly spent them on pressing necessities like food, rent, utilities, clothing, and vehicle payments. Who needs Republicans pushing discredited Reagan-era myths about the drug-addicted poor when Joe Manchin can just do it for them? In the words of the Nobel Prize-winning economist Paul Krugman, the sad truth is, this didn't have to happen. Soaring child poverty wasn't caused by inflation or other macroeconomic problems. It was instead a political choice. Yes, child poverty is a political, a policy choice. There's nothing natural or inevitable about it. We as a country, as a society, choose to inflict poverty and hunger on millions of kids. And the person to blame for this is not Joe Biden, not most Democrats even. It's all of the Republicans and Joe Manchin. I have to ask, how does Joe Manchin sleep at night knowing children in this country, including in his state of West Virginia, are going to sleep poor and hungry because of him? I know I wouldn't be able to. Now, you must ask yourself this question. If we know, if we know that there are policies that will make sure that children do not grow up in poverty, that would make sure children are fed and can go to school and uh, with full bellies have minds that are working. If we know that, what do you call those who will purposefully remove that subsidy 
to children who would purposefully ensure that children go hungry, that the poverty rate goes up. Are these the people who we can really call pro-life? Absolutely not. Again, the only pro-lifers in America are progressives who see that they want policies that help people. So folks, again, remember when you're going to the, to the election booth, remember those who will ensure children, not necessarily yours, but children in general, children that are fed such that they, their minds are developed so that they won't be in their latter years become criminals because of a, what has happened to their mind in their rearing ages, in their rearing days. Come on, folks. Let's elect people who care about humanity. We Let's elect people who care about humanity. Let's elect people who care about humanity. You know, uh, Donald Trump has been really trying to make it seem like El Señor Biden was somehow mentally impaired. Well, you know, over the weekend, what he showed, he showed, and, and, and this, I looked at the way he spoke. I looked at the way he talked. Talk about mental impairness. I think we have a clear winner right here. I want you to check this out. Then we'll take it on the other side. Hear ye, hear ye. It seems like El Señor Donald Trump, the former president of the United States, number 45, thinks that he is running against Obama for the presidency. But it even gets worse. It seems like he thinks that we've only gone through World War I, so the next World War, I guess, will be World War II. And he sounds quite interesting. Folks, listen to me, man. Imagine if this was El Señor Biden, President Biden, who did this. Imagine what the right wing would have been doing with it. This would be in a repeat reel over and over and over again. Maybe it is time. Maybe it is time for folks to get a little bit of their own medicine, don't you think? Well, watch former President Trump become the person that he attempts to make Biden into. Poetic justice is an interesting thing. He thinks it's running against Obama. He thinks it's back in World War II. Well, crooked Joe Biden and the radical left have weaponized law enforcement to arrest their leading political opponent and leading by a lot, including Obama. It was, I'll tell you what, you take a look at Obama and take a look at some of the things that he's done. This is the same thing. The country is very divided. And we did with Obama. We won an election that everyone said couldn't be won. We beat Hillary Clinton. Now, you know, I used to I used to call her crooked Hillary. One million dollars to a writer of fiction about Donald Trump to lie and say it was fact where Hunter Biden's laptop from hell was Russian disinformation and the FBI knew it wasn't. But 51 intelligence agents said it was and they knew it wasn't also in a Department of Justice that refuses to investigate egregious acts of voting regularities and fraud and we have a man who is totally corrupt and the worst president in the history of our country who is cognitively impaired in no condition to lead and is now in charge of dealing with russia and possible nuclear war just think of it we would be in world war ii very quickly if we're going to be relying on this man and far more devastating than any war there will never be a war if that happens there will never be a war like this it will obliterate everything sometimes you have to watch out as you condemn others as you wish things onto others because a lot of times they materialize into yourself it's either poetic justice or it's either karma it's something but i tell you Donald Trump seems not that he's unhinged, but that he's become even more mentally incapacitated. So who is the one again that has an issue with their minds? Come on, folks. It's right there in front of you. 
It's right there in front of you. Donald Trump. He doesn't know that World War II has already occurred. It's World War III. World War III. Come on again. World War III. And the second thing that he doesn't know is, oh, my God, I'm running against Obama. And now we have Mike Cisak trying to protect his fewer. Mike Cisak is, oh, my God, I've been calling, I've been calling uh, Biden for so long that he's mentally incapacitated. And it turns out it's my fewer that is mentally incapacitated. My fewer is mentally incapacitated. I'm sorry, Mike Cisak. But anybody who did and behaved like Donald Trump has behaved, uh, both in the things that he's done and more, you have to believe the man is mentally incapacitated. Definitely mentally incapacitated. All right. One more video to show you guys before we get out here is uh, something that we did a couple last, I think on Friday last week on KPFT. I want to tell all women out there, we've got your back. We have definitely got your back. Let's go to Brian. Yeah, I know you have other callers. So I'm going to be as brief as possible about abortion. It takes two people to have a, a, a child, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, what if the male wishes to uh, have the, the child? Who speaks for uh, his voice? I'm sorry. Th that is one thing where males don't have a voice. Uh, yes, it takes two. But the thing about it is since the male doesn't carry the child, the male has no voice until he takes care of that child, which means until that child is birthed. So no, he has... Le let me tell you, if he wants to have an influence on that woman then he b better be nice to that woman and does what it what they always ask of women to do to get the things that women get from men you see when men get at a disadvantage they scream but when they put women at a disadvantage, they want to be of omnip omnipotent power. So, you know, it's amazing, right? We are at a disadvantage, uh, Brian. We don't have a say. Women do. We don't. They do. That's my answer, my dear brother. Now, my niece had a daughter. That daughter had a premature child. They, uh, they life her from Crystal Beach, the UTMB. I went there. I saw the child in the incubator. It was about one third the size of a Barbie doll. The attending nurse said, did you know that this stage that child can be aborted? I had no idea. Later on, I found out about partial birth abortion. A woman wrote an article. She had a nervous breakdown because she was holding the head of the child. The doctor stuck a needle in the back of its head and sucked its brains out. Before that happened, that child touched that woman's hand and grabbed that finger. She had a nervous breakdown. Who speaks for the child? Well, let me let me just say this, okay? I mean, those things sound horrific, what you just said. No human being can listen to what you just said and not feel something. I did, as you said that. But again, my feelings don't matter. And I know when you talk about who speaks for the child, Brian, I hope the same passion that you have for an unborn child was the passion you had to support the born and the living. So my, my thing is, these are not simple issues. They're complicated issues. And I learn, I know what my position is and I know where I am supposed to be. I know that I believe in supporting that woman, whoever that woman is carrying a child. And I would try to make life in such a manner that she doesn't feel that something that is appended to her is a burden. But ultimately, if society were more responsive to women in pregnancy, I, if society was more responsible with policies, these are questions we would never have to answer. So to people like you, Brian, who I think uh, basically have a heart, try not to have your heart polarized by an instant and have it polarized by positivity towards society as a whole. And then we won't even have to talk about issues like abortion. Continue, my friend. No, it, it is about abortion. Uh, Brian, as long as you make the issue on abortion, you will be blinded from what causes abortion. I always say as an engineer, as a scientist, I like to look at causality. 
I like to look at what creates things, make things happen. The problem with shallow thinking, and I'm not calling your thinking specifically shallow, but those who inform you shallow, that the problem with that type of thinking is that everything, everything seems to be a solution. You guys look at immigration the same way. You want to put a wall up as opposed to solving what is occurring that creates that border problem. When it comes to poverty, you want to tell people to go to work as opposed to looking at why is it some people don't go to work, etc. I believe in solving problems at the core where it's actually solvable. Whenever you guys talk about other things, and when I say you guys, not you specifically, but the right, the, the, the thinking methodology fails and it, it, it doesn't solve problems. It tries to put band-aids on things. Whenever you start having it, Neil, you want to add to that? I saw your mouth Brian, moving. I just have a question for Brian. And I, I, I mean, obviously I hope the answer is yes and everyone as well, but to, to your knowledge, did your niece have health insurance that paid for that life flight from Crystal Beach to um, to the medical yeah. center? Yes, she did. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that because, and, and I obviously hope everyone's well, because so consistently when we advocate for everyone to have health insurance, um, the answer is no. Um, those flights are tremendously expensive. And we talked a little earlier about the universal basic income program that Lena wanted uh, and the county commissioners have enacted uh, um, to a degree. And the Republicans immediately said, we're going to pass laws um, prohibiting it. So I, I wish that there was just better support for the infrastructure that would allow for healthy, healthy actions. All right. Okay. Give me a closer, Brian. I need to go to the next caller. No, I'm a mechanic. OK, I'm an actual true mechanic, not a parts changer. I am a mechanic. And that answers your question also. We spend a lot. I am a mechanic, and that answers your question also. Okay, look, let, let, let me just say one thing again. Uh, and this is to men. You have zero agency on a woman's body. Zero. The way our, uh, we have no woman telling us what we can do to control or not control those little guys that go do some fertilizations, etc. And we don't allow women to tell us certain things about our parts that are specific to our biology. We have zero agency with women. And the sooner we learn that, the better off the entire world will be. If we want to be, if we want to be supportive of women, we'll make sure and say, okay, what would you like me to do during the time that you are keeping the species going forward? That is what, that is the only thing. That's the only agency we have. How can we support women as they go through birth? Something we cannot do. All right. Anyway, we're coming close to the end of the program. You guys have had some great, um, uh, uh, Mike Cisak, uh murder is what uh, our Texas state legislator Terz, is doing right now to Texans by not giving them the Medicaid expansion to Affordable Care Act. Murder is what politicians are doing in Mississippi by keeping the water unsafe to drink. Murder is what people, the politicians in Texas are doing that cause hospitals to close, which people who wouldn't otherwise go, uh, go and live and survive accidents don't. That's murder. That is murder. OK, uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, I, I just put a piece up there for uh, for that Michael Rodden put. And it seems like Bridge MCP wants one as well. So I'm going to put Bridge MCP. Look at the marginal tax rates as reported by uh, by R that Rodden put out there. And here is the who is healthier uh, that we have for Michael. I mean, from uh, Bridge MCP that shows an overweight, unfit Donald Trump. Next to a bike riding uh, Biden. Yeah, right? Anyway, let's see. Lee Grant says, we can't leave something as important as the continuation of our species just up to women. Then you should have asked if, you're a, if, you're, if you believe God is the one who uh, created humanity. 
then I think that is something that you have to talk with him because he created women as the one who can keep the species going forward. So therefore, we cannot force them to be incubators. Now, with science, maybe we can go ahead and create babies in a test tube. Eh. But then again, the same people uh, on the right would be saying, ah, we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that. So I don't know what to tell you. All I know is women, I've got your back. No male, no body should have agency over your body. Anyway, folks, please uh, support the program. Go to politicsandright.com slash support, politicsandright.com slash support to support our program. I'm going to put that link in the feed right now. And I'd like to ask you so kindly as well to subscribe, become a paid subscriber of our newsletter. Uh, that newsletter can be found at politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter, politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter. That is how we can go ahead and continue to do what we're doing. Look, this is not the only thing we do. We don't only do the radio show on air and this show here. We also write a lot. We, we do a whole lot to promote the um, progressive message, the only thing that can save this country at this point in time. And that is, I am not, I'm, I'm not being uh, hyperbolic when I say uh, progressiveness is the only solution we have left to save America and to put, to put it bluntly, to save the world. Because under the methodology of the capitalists, I'm sorry, we are in trouble. We are in trouble. So please, again, please support the program by going to politicsandright.com slash support. One more time, politicsandright.com slash support. As well, uh, please go ahead and subscribe to our newsletter. I ask you so kindly, subscribe to our newsletter. Show that, that, that you want to be a part of, of helping us make that change. You want to be a part of making sure we do what is right. You have a wonderful day. I see you're leaving. I'm Michael Rudnan. And for all of you that are here, absolutely every single one of you that I hear, I want to thank you for being here. We could not do this show, this program without you, uh, both for what you're doing, both for what you're investing in the program, both for the investing intellectually, etc. That is what we need. Uh, Bruce says, totally agree. Left-wing progressive movement is our only hope. Absolutely so. Anyway, my brothers and my sisters, thank you so kindly for having been here. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this. Baby, I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.